So, a few things have happened today. Number one, we're on a road trip. Zachary is driving. Woo! Uh, 
uni, got really involved in plays, ran a theatre company there that, um, what's called Affinity, anyway, um, just acted in loads of different types of plays, loads of different types of characters, came out of uni and really knew after three years that I really, really, really wanted to do acting, made peace with the fact that I'd probably um, never have any money and uh, applied to get into drama school. There's loads of little things on the way that I can go into more detail of like how I got into drama school, how I got an agent, what youth theatres I was in, how that helped to choreograph maybe the start of my career. But I just feel like this would be a very long, fairly boring video if I did that. Is that your name? I think that would be very interesting. <laughs> uh, would you have any plan Bs? Like, did you think, if this doesn't happen, like, did you give yourself an out? Were you thinking, boy, I'm just going to go after it for this long. And if it doesn't happen by this point, then I can always go back and do something else. Um, I didn't have a plan B, but I did have my drama degree, which I guess was my plan B if, like, I can figure out what other job I could... I'll just have to figure that out. Um, because I, I'd had a degree, but it was... It was a drama degree, so it was fairly specialised. <laughs> I feel like that's not a plan. I feel like you put everything into it. Because what else are you going to do with a drama degree besides? Well, be a drama degree is actually the, the most employable theater. degree because anyway. No, tell me. That's interesting. I didn't know this. Um, why? Why is it the most employable degree? Well, because it shows you. It was the skills that a lot of employers wanted at the time in terms of like PowerPoint presentation.
really want to go to drama school it's really hard to get in and it's a big investment of money so I just I was really committed to wanting to go and hone my craft a bit and what was brilliant about that agent is she said great we love it we love that drama school I went to East 15 uh, which is a bit of a artsy kind of very avant-garde you go and live in the woods for days and stare at leaves and stuff and because I'm quite I was quite academically minded I needed loosening up a little bit um so that was brilliant about that agent so then anyway fast forward a year I come out of drama school I do a couple of short films that my agent got me to audition for you don't get paid anything it's all a bit um a bit woe bit way like the you know it's a student film a student short film so loosey goosey loosey goosey that's where you really learn I never trained in film either only in theatre so you do loads of different workshops and body workshops and scene study and character study but never I never did any acting for the camera license and I don't think that you need to to act on film anyway so um then then I did uh, my first low budget feature which I think I got paid maybe 50 pounds a day maybe um so I was doing a million other jobs alongside acting I took kids drama and theatre and singing for four to eight year olds I mean I was absolutely terrible actually ended up getting fired from that job and I tried so hard at it but it was just not meant to be I handed out flyers on the street I tested people for chlamydia, a whole other thing that we can go into side hustle jobs. Anyway, acting at this point was definitely not paying my rent. Um, and then I did a movie about vampires with people from LA. Still didn't get paid anything really, but it just opened up this door of here's these people from this mythical place called Los Angeles, and they just seemed normal and I was just as good as they were and we were colleagues instead of me feeling like oh my gosh here's these American filmmakers they're gonna be like gods and they were amazing but like I could hold my own and so then I just got this this absolute burning desire to go to LA and answering your questions like I said to myself I'm gonna give myself five years and wow, if I, I never knew that five did you not know years. that yeah, so I'm going to give myself five years. There's been several things about this that I did not Oh my gosh. Um, I'm going to give myself five years, and if I can't pay my rent from acting after five years, then it's time to do something else. So because I gave myself that um, deadline, I just felt like now is the time to go for it. Sorry if this is very funky. <laughs> now is the time to go for it. So I just had this bee in my bonnet about getting to LA. I felt like I'd come out of drama school, always wanted to do theatre, all I was booking was student short films and these very low budget feature films that for me were absolutely amazing. But I wasn't booking any theatre and that's all I ever wanted to do was theatre and I was booking these film jobs that I had no formal training in. Um, so I thought, well, if this is my path in, I have to go where the films are made. And that at the time was Los Angeles. So I didn't have any money. I didn't have any contacts. Oh no, I did have these contacts from doing this film. So I'd known, I knew that people in LA were not crazy and uh, like mythical gods. Some mythical gods. Um, I didn't less have- Less so when you meet them. Less so when you meet them. I didn't have any money and uh, no contacts in the industry other than the people in this film. So I just said out loud that I was gonna go. I wrote to uh, I, I, uh, 47 agents and did the exact same thing as I did in England. I uh, hand wrote them uh, letters. I sent a headshot in the mail found them all on IMDb Pro which if you get your it's like a monthly subscription I think it's $7.99 a month and it gives you the names and addresses of people's agents so I looked up actors that I loved and I saw the agents and I wrote to them I mean I had no idea who was a good agency who was bad managers all this stuff in, in LA you have managers and you have agents so I wrote to a bunch of them uh, 
didn't hear anything back, followed up with an email, heard back from, well, and then I got a ton of rejections, brilliant. Um, then I wrote to them again, still saying, I wrote to them, this was end of September I finished the film, I wrote to them saying, hey, I'm coming out in November. Uh, a month out, had no, no money for a plane ticket, no place to stay. Um, I just told them that I was coming out and I would love to meet with them. I was coming out for a month. Uh, then fast forward two weeks, I uh, was talking to the people that I did the film with. They were seeing if they could find anybody to um, help, like any accommodation I could stay at. Uh, hadn't come through yet, still didn't have money for my plane ticket. Week. Uh, so then it's like two weeks out from flying. I booked a commercial. Oh, gave me money for my ticket. Had a ticket, nowhere to stay. One week out from going, the director of the movie's ex-girlfriend lived in a studio apartment in Silver Lake and she said that she would rent her sofa to me for 500 bucks. I was like, done. For how long? For the month. For the month. So I had a plane ticket and I had a, uh, a sofa to sleep on. I did not have any meetings. Then, like a couple days before, I heard back from three people saying that they would like to meet with me. So it was great. So I, and then uh, one of those meetings fell through when I landed there. Anyway, landed. It was a mild disaster. My credit card wouldn't work. Uh, my debit card was rejected when I was trying to do the hire car. Anyway, finally got into this hire car, driving to Silver Lake. To, oh, rental car driving to Silver Lake and this person that I had never met before. It was getting dark, my sat nav stopped working. Uh, basically, all this stuff went wrong. Met with the two, three meetings turned into two, I can't remember if I said that. Met with them, one really liked, one was, seemed dodgy. Um, was gonna sign with this one manager and then, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so long, was gonna sign with this one manager and then, um, went for lunch with the girl I was staying with, we ended up having an amazing time, went for lunch with one of her friends, we were talking about what I was doing there, I sent him my show reel that I had made entirely from one student short film that I had done, but because it was high quality it looked like it could have been this huge feature film, but it wasn't, it was just a student short film. Um, he sent it to his managers who then wanted to meet me. I go on one of my last days there to meet them. Oh, I was halfway there to meet these managers and they called and cancelled and said they had to reschedule for the next day. I was like, oh, brilliant, this isn't happening, never mind. Went to meet them the next day, got on like a house on fire, spoke about my cat's operation. I don't know, showed them videos of this operation. It was so grim and gross. And, uh, anyway, we all fell in love. Ended up signing with them on one of my last days in LA. And they said to me, you have to come back uh, in January for pilot season. So at this point, we're in the end of November. They told me I had to move to LA in January for pilot season. I, which is when all the TV shows used to be cast for the year. Uh, so I go back home. Um, furiously saving up money, working on my different jobs, um, start trying to apply for a visa, scrape the money together for a plane ticket, come back out, um, and had enough money for three months because I had done a TV, my first TV job, and the money for that came through at the right time, which gave me money for three months in LA. And this was like living, eating cans of soup. I go, I hit the ground running pilot season, had enough money for three months, um, ended up moving off that friend's sofa because she was moving in with her boyfriend at the time, found these new roommates on Craigslist. Um, that went great, ended up moving in there. And then was getting to the point where it was three months and I was gonna be out of money. And then I get this audition for a TV show called Shelter. I book it in March, yeah, which is- earlier than that, wasn't it? Was it March? No, March. Yeah, I booked it in March because that was my three oh, months. Six months, yeah. Booked it in March uh, on set on April the 1st, 2012, I start that pilot. My first proper, I 
done a little bit role in a TV show, but this is my first American TV show as in an American accent. Who do I meet on day one of filming Zachary Burt oh We are now God. engaged. That pilot didn't go, but it gave me enough money to feel a bit more secure for the rest of the year. Although I did end up having an accident and having a medical bill that totaled the amount that I got paid on that pilot or half, no, close to it. Half, half well, after I paid my reps and everything. Oh, that's true. It was pretty close to it. So after feeling like, oh my gosh, I've got a nice chunk of change, it went down dramatically because um, I had a large medical bill. this point but I could it was an, I could only it was only for acting and there was a, a, a I could do acting I could be a horse groom or I could be a, a party princess because that was still performing to earn cash while I was still auditioning so I was a party princess I would go dressed up as Ariel she was my fave um, to these children's parties I was so terrible at it we had to do face painting and games and kids just had I just have no authorities so they didn't really listen to me um, and then so so then fast forward we're towards the end of 2012 now and I was just out of cash I was having a great time Zach and I were kind of dating we were definitely dating, we were definitely dating. It, but I just I hadn't booked another job. I was kind of, I was just out of money. I just couldn't keep myself afloat. So I decided I was gonna go home, uh, get back my waitressing jobs, get back my flyering, whatever. And I felt completely at peace with it. I felt like I'd come to LA, I'd given it a really good go. I'd met some incredible people. I'd booked a job, which for me was the like pinnacle of, hey, what you was weren't it? crazy. JJ Abrams. It was a JJ, it was a big pilot. Um, and it just, it was an American, and just so many things that validated me having this crazy dream in the first place. Um, Maggie's yawning. Um, so, so yeah, it got to the end of the year, and I was basically, it was time, it was time for me to go home and regroup. Uh, my last audition before I was to go home was for an untitled Marvel TV pilot that was going to shoot in January of 2013. I go through the first round, I then get to the second round with producers, I then hear that I'm testing, I then test with a man, with, well, with, actually with three Fitz, three Simmons. I'm in a TV, I'm in a room with... Tell who the other people were that you tested with. Well, I don't want to say because they didn't get it and they might not want to. Well, I mean, one of them is like... like well, okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to know, let me know because maybe I can I'll let you know. Um, anyway, I booked it. They get, I get the call and they say, hey, you need to be back in LA in January. You booked this pilot and I say oh that's great but I'm back in England now can you fly me back I ha I've completely run out of money and they said yeah we'll fly you back and I never left since that TV show was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. we did the pilot in January and then we got picked up to go to series in June and that was season one and season seven is airing right now and my life completely changed. Not in big ways, but just in, it kept me in, well, in huge, no, in huge ways. It didn't change who my friends were, it didn't change who, no. you know, but it definitely, um, I mean, it, it basically changed everything. It just didn't change. Well, you all needed, like, that every single decision that you made. I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it kept me in LA. Yeah, so that's my journey from school to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you want more of these videos, they're going to be me trying to talk as quickly as I possibly can. Um, I, I want to be super honest. I want to be able to help people act if they want to act or direct if they want to direct or do auditions. Maybe it can help you for job interviews too. Maybe it can be something that is, what do you call it, transferable skills. If you want to see more of these videos, let me know. 
this might just play on my phone and that's it. 